man, every time, and I mean every time I think we're done with the petty stupidity of the contrarian pal world hater types who seem to just spend their days waiting on reasons to be pissy about something literally millions of other people are just out there enjoying, you know, perfectly peacefully. Outrageous. And then BAM! Here comes another one. And for the sake of dramatic effect, my inclination is to call it the dumbest one yet. But it, it's not, because there's some fairly steep competition out there for dumb, as far as Pal World haters go. I mean, this one's pretty dumb, but there is there is there is a shocking oversupply of dumbness in takes when it comes to trying to slap this funny little survival sandbox game around. So it's been 28 days since Pal World launched. For those of you bad at math, like me, I've gone ahead and used a calculator to compute out that it's been exactly four weeks since Pal World launched to enormous and shocking success, and I have spent a large portion of those four weeks waiting for this exact event to happen because I saw it coming a mile off. But exactly four weeks since Power World launched to enormous and shocking success, rapidly spiking to 2.1 million concurrent players on Steam alone, just one of the two platforms it launched on, but Power World now is hemorrhaging players. Just a pitiful four weeks after its stunning hype-filled launch, players are abandoning the game, fleeing it like a sinking ship. Player numbers are plummeting like a stone made entirely out of depleted uranium. Our when you betcha people are noticing for days now endless headlines and commentaries and articles detailing the catastrophic failure of Pal World to keep hold of the millions and millions of players it originally attracted. Well, that's the framing of all this anyway, and it's so catastrophically stupid and bone shatteringly ignorant and just Oh, uh, so very, very disingenuous. I don't know how the people saying this stuff aren't embarrassed to say it or embarrassed to continue existing as people in public where, where other people can see you being this dumb. But the flood of this narrative has gotten so bad the community manager for Power World has publicly derided it and he called it lazy, which is about the kindest version of the sentiment I can imagine a community manager is inclined or allowed to use. I would have said f***-headed country, but that's me. This emerging Pal world has lost X percent of its player base discourse is lazy. But it's probably also a good time to step in and reassure those of you capable of reading past the headline that it is fine to take breaks from games. You don't need to feel bad about that. Power World, like many games before it, isn't in a position to pump out massive amounts of new content on a weekly basis. New content will come, and it's going to be awesome, but these things will take a little bit of time. And he's very right. Of course he's very right. That's all perfectly logical and clear and sensible. It, it's a very rare game that holds on to its initial player base long term. And it's a very, very rare game that overrides a gamer's drive to try new games or get around to playing the old ones on their backlog. Sometimes even you play a new game and you find a game like Power World through all the hype and, and trying it out out of curiosity to see what all the fuss is about and maybe through that you discover that while you've never really played any other ones you never thought you'd like them in fact you really do enjoy this kind of survival sandbox game and now you want to give some other ones a go so you stop playing Power World and you try some other ones. But sometimes, just sometimes, we do get absorbed in a game, don't we? I spent two years playing Monster Hunter Rise pretty much constantly, and it's expansion, Sunbreak. For a long, long time, it was every single day, and then several times a week, and eventually just a couple times a week, when bits of new content would drop, and then the new content stopped. Uh, I still kept playing it for the year after that, but not nearly as often. I would start new files and do experiments and do little challenge runs and stuff. But even amongst all that, 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 that addiction that was Monster Hunter, I still played other games. Quite a lot of other games. And framing Power Lord as failing because there's been a drop-off in players, even a very significant drop-off in players, after the first month is so monstrously dull-witted, you cannot and must not ever take anyone who ran with this, this narrative seriously ever again. They're buffoons!
Let's put this into perspective with math facts. Palo World has dropped about 25% of its average concurrent player count on Steam in those four weeks since launch. Sounds pretty bad, right? A quarter of the players already gone just weeks after launch. Well, let's look at Baldur's Gate 3. Also a crazy hyped game, supremely popular. I've literally never talked to anyone who has played it who doesn't praise it. It's still on my backlog, by the way, if you're curious. I haven't got around to it yet. But it also plummeted in active players in just weeks after its full launch. It spiraled and lost 40% of its concurrent players. <gasps> What a failure of a game. Oh, but, you know, that's, that's an RPG, right? It has an end. Of course, people are going to stop playing it once they've reached the end of the game. They've, they've finished the game. So how about a much fairer comparison? How about we talk about Valheim? Just like Pal War that launched in early access, unfinished, incomplete, it too is a survival sandbox crafty buildy thing. It's a very, very fair comparison. Well, look at that. It had a huge launch. Nearly half a million concurrent users. That's massive for an indie game. And oh, oh no, D does, does Valheim secretly suck? Look at that, look at that. Look at that little line bottoming out there. Somehow it also lost a huge amount of players after launch. How about something like uh, PUBG? One of the first true smash hits of its genre. It helped define the genre, at least in video games. Uh, and a game with no end, designed to be endlessly played over and over and over again, designed to hold on to as many players as it can over the long term. Wait, wait, you're telling me it also had a huge spike at launch and then trailed off very quickly and stabilized afterwards at a much, much lower concurrent player count? That's, that's so weird. What a weird coincidence and not at all a pattern of entirely logical human behavior. All right then, how about something complex with massive amounts of highly praised replayability? Surely a game like that would hold on to its player base. How about Elden Ring as an example for that? Uh, it, that will prove us all wrong, right? That was a global phenomenon. You couldn't look sideways at a gaming site or content creator without hearing about it. I don't really care much about the game. I, I don't like, really like the aesthetic of that style of game. So I never really watched any content about it, but my YouTube feed was still full of recommendations about the damn game. Oh, oh wait, it, this is this has got to be a conspiracy at this point. Do all of these smash hit hyped up games secretly suck? Because once people play them, a lot of them go play other things instead. The, 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 surely the games are failures. They suck, miserable, pathetic, failure games. I would hope at this point, my somewhat less than dry, sardonic Gen X Aussie snark has driven home the point here. Palworld was always going to slow down. It was always going to bleed away a player base. It will likely never again see the kinds of concurrence from launch month, and that is perfectly normal. What will also be normal for a game of this type in early access is it'll have little spikes every time a big new content update drops, and those two will see trailing trails. This is normal for every game, every game type. Even the very best games ever made had exactly this kind of player drop-off around about a month after launch. And trying to pretend it means Palworld is bad, or that it was overhyped, or that you, the theoretical pisspants naysayer, was right all along. You always said Palworld would fail, and look, 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 look at the evidence. Look at I was right. I was right. Palworld is, is, is sucky, and people aren't playing it anymore because they played it and tried it and they don't like it, and then they walked away from the game. Brr. You're a clown. And we are all laughing at you for saying that. I'm going to let Bucky, the community manager, finish off here. There are so many amazing games out there to play. You don't need to feel guilty about hopping from game to game. If you are still playing Pal World, we love you. If you're no longer playing Pal World, we still love you and hope you'll come back for round two when you're ready. Play lots of games, try different genres, and frequently flick through indie libraries to find hidden gems. I got nothing more to add to that. Except to say thank you very much for watching. I am Blunty. Thank you as always to the patrons. Scrolling up above there, who's above me on support is spectacular. Don't know why I rolled the R then, just, just felt like the mood. I did just have two coffees in a row. Might have might, might have something to do with that. I'm gonna have a third one.